Hello children and welcome to this session today. So children in the previous session we talked about coal and petroleum. One of the things that we talked about was that petroleum is made up of a long chain of hydrocarbons. These are all tied together. When you break these bonds by burning petroleum, you generate a lot of energy. Today we are talking about this burning process. In chapter number 6, we are going to talk about combustion and flame. What exactly is combustion? What is a fuel? What is its calorific value? What are the types of fuels? How do you extinguish a fire? What is the impact of burning fuels on the environment? And what is a flame? So children, essentially combustion is defined as the process of burning of substances in air or oxygen which leads to the evolution of heat and light. So, combustion number one essentially takes place in the presence of oxygen and it gives out heat and it gives out light. So, in order to for combustion to take place, a substance has to be combustible. That means you should be able to burn it. So, I have a very thick plastic pen in my hand. If I bring a matchstick to it, will I be able to burn it? No. I will end up probably melting it. But if I bring a matchstick, a burning matchstick next to a paper, what is going to happen? It is going to immediately catch fire. Do not attempt this at home. So, paper is a combustible substance and plastic Heavy duty plastic will be a non-combustible substance. So here we get to know about these two types of substances. Now as a result of combustion what is formed? Heat is formed and light is formed. But is there anything else also that is formed? Yes, combustion gives out carbon dioxide. How else do you think we are talking so much about not burning things, not burning waste because it's le it leads to the production of a lot of carbon dioxide which is added to the air. So, here is an example of an equation which tells us how combustion takes place. So, when methane reacts with oxygen, it produces carbon dioxide, water and energy. Now, this is when the supply of oxygen is sufficient. What happens if there is insufficient supply of oxygen? As you can see from the same equation, carbon monoxide is formed. So, carbon monoxide is more dangerous than carbon dioxide. Now, let us talk about conditions necessary for combustion. Let us understand with a few experiments. Hold a piece of charcoal or magnesium ribbon with a pair of fire tongs over a Bunsen burner. You will observe that they burn to produce heat and light. Charcoal and magnesium ribbon are combustible substances. Combustible substances are those that burn to produce heat and light. On the other hand, substances that do not burn are called non-combustible substances. Glass, stone, steel spoon are examples of non-combustible substances. The process in which a substance reacts with oxygen to give off heat and light is called combustion. Light a candle and fix it on a glass plate. Place an inverted glass jar over the candle. You will observe that it stops burning after a few seconds. This happens because when the air in the inverted glass jar gets consumed by the flame, the candle gets extinguished. This proves that air is necessary for burning. So, from this experiment, we understand that air is necessary for combustion and in air which component? Oxygen. So, first of all, a combustible substance has to be present. Then oxygen has to be present because it supports combustion. And the third is ignition temperature should be present. Ignition temperature is the temperature which a substance begins to burn. So, for example, again taking the example of this pen, 
when i bring a matchstick clothes to it it is going to take a lot of time it is first going to melt then probably hours later it is going to burn so that means the temperature at which it burns is very high whereas paper burns immediately so what will be the ignition temperature of paper very low there are two types of substances based on ignition temperature so those who will have a very low uh temperature will be inflammable substances like paper and those which have a very high ignition temperature will be non inflammable substances like plastic then children let's talk about the type of combustion so the moment you switch on the gas and you bring a lighter to it it immediately lights up what is it called it is known as rapid combustion then comes spontaneous combustion when the substance burns in bursts into flames without bringing it in contact with heat is known as spontaneous combustion do you know that pure sodium if you just bring it out in open it will start burning without you providing a matchstick also why because the ignition temperature is so low that is why it is stored in water then there is explosion so we all have heard about crackers we have seen crackers we've heard about bombs these explode with a large amount of noise and release large amount of gases so this is the third type of combustion now during diwali we are given a list of instructions to follow number 1 being do not burn crackers now if you are a really naughty child and you want to burn crackers what do you do in case there is a fire so extinguishing a fire let's understand about this now fire can be caused by petrol electricity etc in case a fire breaks out due to a combustible substance like wood or paper it can be put off by throwing water on it water cools the combustible substance below its ignition point also when the water is heated by the fire it forms water vapor which surrounds the combustible material helping in cutting off the supply of air thus extinguishing the fire water should not be used to put off a fire caused by electricity this is because water is a good conductor of electricity and it can give an electric shock to the person putting off the fire use sand or a fire extinguisher to put off such a fire do not put off a fire caused due to oil with water because oil is lighter than water and floats on the surface of water spreading the fire use a fire extinguisher to put off such a fire so the steps that are required in extinguishing a fire are depending on the origin of fire so you either remove the combustible substance or you cut the supply of air or you use fire extinguishers now these fire extinguishers also are of two types some of them contain carbon dioxide some of them do not again their use depends on the source of the fire so whenever there is a fire children what do you see you basically see flames coming out like this now in case of a candle when you see a candle very closely if you keep looking at it you will see that there are practically 3 to 4 layers in that flame so all the substances flammable substances they burn with a flame the substances like wax which vaporize they burn with a flame lpg gas stove when you switch it on click the lighter it burns with a flame now this flame has got different layers in it let us understand these layers in a flame you must have seen the flame of a candle lpg flames etc a flame is a region where burning of fuel in its gaseous form takes place only solid fuels like wax and camphor which vaporize on heating burn with the flame on the other hand charcoal only burns in combustion it does not produce a flame as it is a solid that does not vaporize on heating to study the zones of a flame observe a candle flame the innermost zone lacks air hence no combustion takes place and it appears black it is the least hot region of the flame 
In the middle zone, there is not enough air for complete burning of wax. Therefore, burning of wax vapor produces carbon particles and carbon monoxide. The carbon particles become white, hot and emit light. This zone is not hot. So, therefore, there is the colorless outer zone of complete combustion. There is a middle zone of partial combustion and there is, there is an innermost zone of unburnt wax vapor. Now, we are talking about combustion again and again. We know that when you heat a substance, it catches fire and it produces heat and light. So, any substance that releases heat is a fuel. What is a characteristic of a good fuel? So, we say that we are using LPG at home or we are using CNG gas at home. What is the characteristic of this fuel that we are using at home? One, it should have a low ignition temperature. It should burn immediately. Second, it should be safe to use, safe to store and safe to carry from one place to another. It should be cost effective. It should be easily available. Does not burn very rapidly. Because when you burn, something burns very quickly, what is going to happen? It is going to finish very quickly. So, it should have a constant burning rate. It should not leave any residue after combustion and it should produce more heat per unit mass. It should produce more heat per unit mass. What is this called? This is known as the calorific value of a fuel. So, if I have to use a fuel at home or if I have to use a fuel in my car, what is important that its calorific value is very high. So, in this table are given calorific value of some fuels. So, as you can see, the calorific value of hydrogen is the maximum and it creates least pollution. That is the reason it is known as green fuel. So, children, all the fuels that we have studied, they can be in different forms. For example, they can be solid fuels. We talked about coal, we talked about cow dung. What are these? Solid fuels. Then there are liquid fuels. What is petroleum? Liquid fuel. Then there are gaseous fuels. So, what are, what are gaseous fuels? Natural gas, LPG, CNG. These are all gaseous fuels. Now, whether you are burning uh, liquid fuels, solid fuels or gaseous fuels, what are you emitting in the environment? You are releasing carbon dioxide in case complete combustion is taking place or you are releasing carbon monoxide in case incomplete combustion is taking place. In both the cases, what are you doing? You are polluting the environment. So, what do we do? Should we stop moving from one place to another? Should we stop cooking food? No. We have to be wise when we are dealing with these fuels. How? Let us understand. Solid fuels like wood and coal upon burning produce smoke, tar and leave behind residue in the form of ash. Smoke and other volatile organic substances irritate eyes and the respiratory system. The fine soot and particles suspend in the atmosphere in the form of respiratory suspended particulate matter which can cause breathing problems. Like solid fuels, liquid and gaseous fuels also produce smoke and other harmful gases like carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen. Sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen dissolve in the water vapor of the atmosphere to cause acidic rain. Incompletely burnt hydrocarbons produce carbon monoxide gas which is poisonous gas and is harmful for animals as well as human beings. Petrol is sometimes added with lead compounds to reduce knocking. When petrol is burnt, the lead and its oxides are released in the atmosphere which can cause poisoning of human beings as well as plants. Now children, there are other activities related to use of resources that hamper the environment. The first one is related to 
dams. So basically, what is happening when you are creating dams? What are you doing? You are uprooting an entire forest area to build a dam so what happens to the animals there what happens to the tribal communities living there what happens to the plants that are living there all of them lose their home the second is oil spill so when these huge oil carrying ships have trouble and they uh, face a wreckage what happens all this oil spills and oil is lighter than water it covers the water so the supply of oxygen to the animals and plants inside that water body is definitely affected then there are nuclear power stations now in case there is a leakage in a nuclear power station or there is an earthquake it can release deadly gases into that area and kilometers thousands of kilometers around that area which affect generations after generations children in this chapter we have learnt about combustion we have learnt the types of combustion we have also learnt about flame and the different layers in flame we have also learnt about how our activities affect the environment it is high time that we become responsible citizen and take proactive action in saving our environment. So I hope you have understood this chapter very well. Thank you for joining us today.